Hi, I'm Nathan Zampronio. Every part of the Hawkesbury is important, and every part of the Hawkesbury deserves good representation and service delivery from Council. However, one of our challenges is that the Hawkesbury LGA is 2,776 square kilometres. That's as big as the rest of Sydney put together. And if you live in one of those outlying areas of the Hawkesbury, I understand your frustration. You feel that sometimes your issues aren't perceived as being as urgent as those of people in more built up areas. I know that you're concerned about the condition of the roads and the ongoing efforts to improve resiliency against flood and bushfires. I wanted to let you know that myself, the Mayor and five other councillors took a 196 kilometre road trip on the weekend as part of our periodic drop-in visits to visit communities at Lower Macdonald, St Albans, Lower Portland and Colo Heights. We wanted to drive on your roads to see the issues firsthand and meet and listen to you as you told your stories. First stop was Wormsley Road at Lower Portland on the eastern bank of the Macdonald River on the way to St Albans. Residents raised concerns about waste removal, load limits, the schedule of repairs for Settlers Road and ensuring councillors are properly informed of community get-togethers so that they can attend and listen to locals. At St Albans we saw the damage done by the July flood where the waters rose to the sills of the windows on the historic Settlers Arms pub. The sand off the road, they just pushed it out of the way and because it's never here it's just left there. So what did Liz say about these pipes? She said I'll talk to As part of the clean-up, sand has been mounded in the main street and just left there, while holes in the riverbank nearby that it came from are left empty. We heard about deficiencies in the process of riverbank repair and in replanting to bind the soil. Sandpaper things, if they're in the right spot, you know, uh, and so you need a combination of both, is my personal understanding. We attended a meeting of the Macdonald Valley Association at the School of Arts, where we learned of the initiative to distribute UHF radios to locals as a stopgap measure to aid communication in times of emergency. This was something that was underlined in a story on a current affair on Monday night. Yes, I've got a faint mobile signal, I'll ring them now. In 2022, this is how hundreds of people just one hour north of Sydney must communicate most days with walkie-talkies. It's a very old-fashioned way to communicate, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We absolutely must get proper mobile reception in the McDonnell Valley. It's not a council responsibility, and apparently it's been the subject of two recent grants, but updates are hard to come by. But we also need to fix the river gauges, complete the McDonald Valley flood risk study, which has dragged on for years now, and get the St Albans RFS station better access to water. At Lower Portland, we met with two dozen local families who have been crippled by the slow pace of the Greens Road repair works. Road closures have forced locals to use local fire trails like Wheelbarrow Ridge Trail, which we drove at the height of a huge thunderstorm. We saw how dangerous the road is, especially at the junction of Hebron Road. With the frequent closures of Greens Road and a five ton load limit, it's not just locals coming and goings that have been disrupted, but deliveries, waste collection, tradies and emergency service vehicles as well. One elderly couple's temporary accommodation may run out while they're getting their dwelling repaired from the flood damage, all for want of the ability to get tradies in. We drove through the Site 1 location, still under repair, and we can see how monumental the job is, and Site 2, further up the river, is little better with work delayed. Finally, at Colo Heights, we met with locals at the Horry Ellie Hall. Residents raised road safety issues on the Putty Road near the site of a landslide, asked Council to clear the asset protection zone behind the school, recommended upgrades to RFS stations and put a very detailed case for better public transport involving a morning and afternoon bus service between Colo Heights and Windsor Station. Some of these issues are for Council to solve and some of them will involve us continuing to make strong representations to our state and federal members of parliament. 
But what you can count on is that myself and the other councillors will take an ongoing interest in your communities and that we will visit you often to listen to you. Thanks for watching and please follow me on social media for updates.